Happy Halloween. Welcome back to Bible and Blues. And we are moving straight into Act 7. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. New avatar, different location. So, without further ado, Stephen's speech to the Sanhedrin, Act 7. Then the high priest asked Stephen, Are these charges true? To this he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our brother Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. Leave your country and your people, God said, and go to the land I will show you. So he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran after the death of his, of his father. A after the death of his father, God sent him to this land where you are now living. He gave him no inheritance here, not even enough ground to set foot, set his foot on. But God promised him that he and his descendants after him would possess the land, even though at, the, at that time Abraham had no child. God spoke to him, sorry, God spoke to him in this way. For, for 400 years, your descendants will be strangers in a, in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves. God said, and afterward, they will come out of the country and worship me in this place. Then he gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision. And Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him eight days after his birth. Later, Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob became the father of 12, the twelve patriarchs. Because the patriarchs were jealous of Joseph, they sold him as a slave into Egypt, but God was with him and rescued him from all his troubles. He gave Joseph wisdom and enabled him to gain the goodwill of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So Pharaoh made him ruler over Egypt and all his palace. Then a famine struck all of, struck all of Egypt and Canaan, bringing the great suffering, and our ancestors could not find food. When Jacob heard, having slight glitches here, <laughs> when Jacob heard that, and there was grain, in, heard that there was grain in Egypt. When Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our forefathers in in their first visit. On the se on their second visit, Joseph told his brothers who he was, and Pharaoh learned about Joseph's family. After jo this, Joseph sent for his father, Jacob, and the whole family, seventy five in all. Then Jacob went down to to Egypt, where he and our ancestors died. Their bodies were brought back to to Seshem, Shechem, and placed in the tomb that Abraham had bought from the sons of Hamor at Shechem for a certain sum of money. As t the time grew near for God to fulfill his promise to Abraham, the number of our people in Egypt had greatly increased. Then a new king, to whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. He dealt treacherously with our people and oppressed our ancestors by forcing them to throw out our, their newborn babies so that they would die. That's horrible. Yeah, man. Why would they do that? I, I, I mean, I guess the numbers were too high, so they want they wanted the people to die out. But you know, this that that's that's really bad. <laughs> At that time, Moses was born, and he was no ordinary child. For three months, he was cared for by his family. When he was placed outside, Pharaoh's daughter took him and brought him up as, as her own son. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his own people, the Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian, so he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would, not, would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. The next day, Moses came upon the two Israelites who were fighting. He tried to reconcile them by saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you want to hurt each other? But the man who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside and said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When Moses heard this, he fled to Midian, where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. I, so Stephen's kind of giving them information they already know. He's just couching in a different, slightly different way, just reminding them of the path that you know the, the people, you know, the Hebrews had taken to get to where they are today. It was a strong, it was a long, and it was it was a convoluted path. Um, and so he's reminding them of all of all of these injustices 
that were performed on, on the Hebrew people. After 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. When he saw this, he was amazed by the sight. As he went over to get a closer look, he heard the Lord say, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses trembled with fear and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their, their groaning, and I have come down to set them free. Now come, I will send you back to Egypt. Here's one of those things, uh, uh, a lesson that we need to learn uh, as patience. Okay, He thought 40 years previous, when he was about 40 years old, that he was there to, to save the Israelites. And while he was, he wasn't there. He was early. He's, he, he needed another 40 years. So he was over 80 years old. Think about that. He was over 80 years old when, they, when, he, did, when he did this. It's actually kind of amazing. Because you know what? My, my, my father, who passed just recently, when he was 80 years old, he was, this was not stuff he could have done. Uh, I know everybody's different as they as a age, but this is, you know, yeah, this is not something he could have done. He could not have climbed Mount Sinai. The, this is the same Moses they had rejected with the words, Who made you ruler and judge? Who made you the boss of me, right? He was sent to be their ruler and deliverer by God himself through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He led them out of Egypt and performed wonders and signs in Egypt and the Red Sea, at the Red Sea and for 40 years in the wilderness. This is the Moses who told the Israelites, God will raise, raise up for you a prophet like me from your own people. He, is, he was in the assembly in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our ancestors, and he received living words to pass on to us. But our ancestors refused to obey him. Instead, they rejected him, and their hearts turned back to, to Egypt. They told Aaron, make, make us gods who will, who will go before us. And for this fellow, Mo, fellow Moses who, who led us out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. That was the same time they made an idol in the form of a calf. They brought the sacrifices to it and reveled in what, what their own hands had made. But God turned away from them and gave them over to the worship of the sun, moon, and stars. This agrees with what was written in, written in the book of, of the prophets. Did you bring me sacrifices and offerings? Forty years in the wilderness, people of Israel. You have taken, you have taken up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Rithan, Rithan. The idols you made to worship, therefore I, therefore I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Our ancestors had the tabernacle of the covenant law with them in the wilderness. They had been made as God directed Moses, according to the pattern he had seen. After receiving the tabernacle, our ancestors under J Joshua brought it with them when they took the land from the nations God drove out before them. It remained in the land until the time of David, who enjoyed God's favor and asked that he might provide a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. However, most high, the Most High does not live in houses made by human hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or will, where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? You stiff-necked people, the hearts and ears, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just, you are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. Yeah, you know, he, he lays into them right there. You stiff-necked people. Your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. So you still haven't actually taken the covenants and actually taken it to heart. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Yeah, they... they and, and this is not unusual for the uh, for the people to prosecute. I mean, let's think about this. If if we were if we had a prophet show up in our day and age, and it has happened, I'm sure of it. How would they get treated? 
Uh, would we treat them really any better? Or would they be thrown into a sanitarium or something like that? So, when the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears, and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragging him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of, of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Here is the reading of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow. So somebody, one of my friends mentioned that this was uh, uh, essentially, you know, Stephen that was stoned. Um, and he used very eloquent words, which they really didn't appreciate. They didn't like his words because they were, um, you know, they were, they were calling him out. They called them out. And, you know, I mean, who likes to get called out, right? Um, you know, because it's very, it's, it's actually pretty crazy that, that they, you know, that he stood there and recited the tabernacle to them, recited the, you know, the, the, the books of Moses to, to them so that they would, um, they, they would see it and they would, uh, and they would feel, you know, the anger and the pain of what they did. So, uh, and, and they, you know, and the history and then of all the things they did, they would all, they would often, the prophets would pay a price for them. Uh, I, and Honestly, I, I ask I ask myself, and you know, how would we respond to uh, to uh, somebody who's claiming to be a prophet, claiming to be, uh, you know, what what Jesus did with Jesus' second coming? I mean, he's going to have it all figured out, of course. I don't, no doubt about that. But it's going to be something else. It's going to be pretty cra- pretty crazy what he does. Um, you know, they're going to try to stop him. Uh, the people that are in power, just like then, the people that are in power will not want to be outside of their power. They want their power. They love their power. Their power is is their friend, and uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah, and Jesus is hey, Jesus is God. So you know, it's going to be a big deal when that happens. So I'm just gonna checking out, you know, showing you some of this world here because uh, this is gonna drop. I decided to start. Uh, scheduling them in the, like three o'clock in the afternoon to drop because uh, it's it's when people are around and they'll see the notification. When I drop them late in the evening, I think one of the things that happens is um, there we go. There we are. Okay. Uh, one of the things that happens is the uh, 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 the uh, the notification is buried and because it's 10 o'clock at night. And unless you're up at 10 o'clock at night, you're not going to notice it. You're not going to see the notification. So uh, I'm going to start doing a little bit later um, in the, in the day, uh, in a different time of day and uh, just kind of schedule it because that's one of the things you can do. Um, so this is actually a really cool world. Um, there we go. Uh, this even has a kitchen in it. Look at that kitchen. Kind of neat. Um, and and then there is a little interesting little thing over here in this world. Uh, let me turn this thing around. There we go. You can see, uh, hopefully, return to game. Jeez, what happened there? Um, this uh, this is kind of a game area, so you can be here with your friends. Um, yeah, with, uh, and, and there's funny hats here. Um, you, know, you see these funny hats right there. Uh, looks like some sort of a pool game. Um, a couple other kind of games, a little spin game. Mallet hit the table. Oh, okay. So, so this, uh, this is uh, would be probably a, a you know whack a mole. Um, so. Um, they stick a, they put Lo-Fi Girl in here. I'm trying to, you won't hear it because anytime I put music on, 
uh, when I when I convert this over to TikTok, uh, people, you know, it, it does it 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 gets muted entirely. So sorry, you don't get to hear the lo-fi music. Um, so, but uh, no, this is a cool place. I like it. Uh, I think it's pretty neat, and it is Halloween. So thank you very much. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, tell me what you think of this. Uh, this world is neat. Um, you know, I think uh, I think I think the the whole concept of Halloween. There's Christians that I know that are very anti-Halloween. Uh, clearly, I'm not one of those. Uh, I I enjoy it. I think it's fun. Um, you know, it's a it's a time to overcome your fears. I think it's a time to you know to uh, to face fears a little bit. And that's kind of what it was about back in the day was to laugh at uh, the fears that you felt. And you know, people can come here. There's people that can't figure out how to kind of lay down in places. They just sit. They'll just sit and talk uh, as a couple of friends in the like in these tents and things. So uh, that would be a place where you'd be a little more private. Um, there's only so much you can do, but you know, mind you. But uh, so anyway, um, I probably won't use this avatar again for a while because it is specifically Halloween. And after and the, and the day after this drops, it will no longer be Halloween. I may try to think I'll be able to find a, a, a Thanksgiving avatar. I think that'd be kind of neat uh, with, uh, you know, just uh, maybe a pilgrim or even just somebody with a pilgrim's hat. You know, this is, uh, I don't, I've, I've, I have friends that would just like really uh, not like this at all. Um, but again, like I said, obviously I don't have a big problem with it. I, I kind of enjoy horror movies and uh, bad movies, actually. I really, my daughter in law, she's funny. She's like, you hate you don't like good movies i'm like no they're horrible they don't do anything you know they're all the same and so i, I like uh i like b movies um, i like b movies i like anime because it's a totally different story uh and it's totally different so uh anyway um you know i'm going to uh call it a night thank you so much for coming uh watching i hope that um, i'll drop this about three o'clock in the afternoon i'm gonna try to make that my norm uh so that uh just you'll it'll it'll show up on your feet a little differently because when it shows up when I drop it at ten o'clock I know a lot of people are asleep or they're going to sleep because ten o'clock my time is midnight one o'clock different parts of the of the U S and my my audience is primarily U S so I'm gonna put this uh put this up like that and uh, thank you very much God bless bye.